So I just got the coil out of the freezer and it has protruded some ice out the end of one end. The other end still has the cap intact. All I can say is, man, this stuff is cold. So I put some duct tape around the riser tube and I'm just forcing the first bend around. And it's doing great. So it's taking me less than a minute to get this far. I'm gonna try and set the camera up now and let you see how it goes. This is going so easy. I've used one of those big tubing, uh, manual tubing benders. Of course it was on three quarter inch copper, but it was difficult to say the least. And I ended up bending and kinking the pipe a little bit. This is going awesome. I'm going to adjust the gap between coils once I get it all on here, but I think I want about twice the thickness of the copper itself as an air gap. I'm, and that's just gut, I have no data to back that up. My hands are cold. But as you can see, I'm able to go around this at pretty good speed. And so far, there's absolutely no indication of collapse or any visible formation of the copper. My hands, however, are bloody cold. So, overall, that was too easy. I did get one slight bend. It's not bad at all. I can probably work it back out in it. Right here, when I was bending the inlet, the ice had already melted out of it and I didn't realize it. So it, it kinks a little bit, but I should be able to work that back out with players probably. And it didn't fully collapse. So all in all, that was awesome. So I'm in the stove building, and which is not finished yet, and it has a bunch of junk in it. But uh, we have the stove in the building, me and my handy assistant here, who's playing a song for us on the Pex trumpet. A tribute to Papa Joe. Um, go ahead, carry on, sir. So, um, I'm using the lower resolution camera on my phone because my normal one is freaking out and wobbling. But we have the stove in the building. So, what I wanted to show you is uh, this. It is a flare nut. Let me see if I can get it to focus here. It is a flare nut. And basically, um, there's a tool that you can clamp on this, which will spread out the tip of this in sort of like the, how the end of a trumpet would look. Very fitting that Judah's playing the uh, Pex trumpet over there right now. I can't get it to focus, sorry. But anyhow, a flare knot, the advantage of it is um, it does not require solder and it's not a, it's a fitting where you can loosen it and then twist and wiggle and um, so anyhow, I'm transitioning from this half inch refrigerant line, the soft copper, to, um, and I can't see what I'm filming, I hope you can see it. 
uh, to a flare nut, and then I forget what this is called, and then there's a half inch uh, nail iron pipe to three quarter inch PEX adapter. And I'll show you the part numbers. Hopefully that's helpful. So this is the um, flare to iron pipe, FIP means female iron pipe. And um, any brand will work, but it looks like this. It has this um, flare. Uh, it receives the flare on the pipe. So then the flare nut is right over here. And the part number on that is called a short rod nut. And we won't giggle too much when we say that. Uh, I'm trying to get the lighting right. But um, it's also a Watts part and that's what they look like. Here, let's try to refocus. That's what they look like. So, um, the advantage of it is we have no solder connections. In the event we have an airlock in the pump or something and we hit superheated temperatures, we're not going to melt down the solder joints, uh, which didn't happen in the last version of the stove I built, which was made on a, an old Fisher stove. Um, I had several solder joints in there and I didn't have any meltdowns um, there. I did have a couple steam events and over temp events, but I just wanted to be as long lasting as possible. So um, I will show you a couple snippets on how these go together. So the flare tool has two parts. It has this clamping array that literally clamps down on the tubing and then this pointed part on the um, actual um, flare maker, I'm not sure what it's called, um, presses into the end of the tubing and flares it out. So I'll show you how it works. So there is the clamping jig attached to the copper tube and then this the pointy end of the flare maker goes into the end of the tube but for this specific one I'm presuming all of them you don't want the copper protruding more than an eighth of an inch so now I'm going to clamp that on there and make the flare there's no way I can do it and show you at the same time so I'll have to show you at the end so there it is with the flare maker and the flange, I guess is what you would call this, attached to the tube before I've made the flare. There it is with the flare made. So let's take a look at that flare job. There it is. See if I can get the focus to work. And then this nut slides up and then the other nut goes in there. Um, so it mates like this. Hey dude. Hi. My name is Judah. That's right, you're the boss. Yeah, I plays the tuba. You're the boss of the sauce. So there you have it. It will be a joint that has no solder, etc. And it should last pretty much indefinitely.